Hey guys, Dr. Z. Okay, one of the big outstanding questions right now in the whole COVID-19 thing is how fatal is it and how many people have already been infected? And the answers to those questions have been stunningly hard to get. It's only been a few months, but still we don't have that data and now we're starting to get some signal. So. Over the last couple of days, uh, Stanford pre-released, it hasn't been peer-reviewed yet, a study where they looked at 3,300 people in Santa Clara County, that's the here in the Silicon Valley, one of the hotspots in California, where they screened them, not based on the nasopharyngeal swab that people talk about where it's a rapid, you know, it's a nasal test and you're looking for the genetic material that shows that you're actively infected. It's a blood antibody test. And you've heard people talking about this. What this shows is when you're infected with the virus, you will create antibodies to fight off the virus. And you can measure those in the blood. It usually takes a week or more to develop those. So when you screen people for those antibodies, assuming your test is good, you're looking for people who have been infected in the past and they may have gotten better, right? So it's a way to figure out if you're sampling the random population, how many people really actually got it, whether they had symptoms or not. And when they did it at Stanford, they found something kind of surprising. Depending on which numbers you believe and how accurate the test is, somewhere between 2.5 to 4% of the entire population of Santa Clara County projected based on what they studied on the 3,300 patients has been exposed and infected with COVID-19. Now, Clearly, most of these people are not having symptoms, or if they are, they're very mild. These are not necessarily people who are showing up to the hospital because the total case rate, in other words, the confirmed testing that say hospitals and clinics have done is around a thousand at this time. This is like April 19th, I'm doing this show. So it, there are many, many more people that have been infected that have not shown up to medical care and have not had it documented, which means something very important. How fatal is this? The numbers that you've seen reported in the news and everywhere else are what they call the case fatality rate. That means of the people who present to, the, to medical care and get tested, that thousand in the Bay Area, what percentage of those are dying? And we've heard really scary numbers from, you know, like 0.9%, which is, you know, if you think a normal flu season is 0.1% fatal, if you get flu, 0.9 is, you know, quite a bit higher than that all the way up to like 4%. And in Italy, very high numbers because Italy is one of the, has one of the oldest populations in the world and we know it affects old people. So people who are showing up to the hospital, if they're older, they're having a very high mortality rate, but that's a case fatality rate. That's for people who are already sick enough to show up and be tested. So what happens, and remember on the Diamond Princess cruise, it was more like 0.5%. They tested almost everyone on the ship, so they had a bigger number to look at, and it was more like 0.5. Now, that was a closed area. Again, maybe an older population. Everybody's really tight. So what did they figure out the case mortality rate might be extrapolating from this data in Santa Clara County? Well, now you're looking at a much lower uh, mortality rate because you're looking at the infectious fatality rate. In other words, of all the people who've been infected, whether or not they showed up to clinic or, and were diagnosed that way, what's the overall mortality rate? And the Stanford uh, researchers actually say in, in their study, if you extrapolate that data, it's more like 0.1 to 0.2%. Swine flu is around 0.2, a normal flu season is around 0.1. Of course, it's coming all at once. And again, I'm not sure I fully believe those numbers for the following reasons. They're still quite a bit lower. And I think the overall number is gonna be quite a bit lower. And the reason is this, in this particular study, there are a couple of major flaws. One is, how good is this test? It turns out antibody tests have been controversial because you, to get them right, you have to study them in a lot of positive patients to make sure that when you test a positive patient, it comes up positive. So in other words, is it sensitive? But then you also have to test it in a population of people you know are negative and make sure that that test is negative. So in other words, how specific is the test? If you get a negative person and a negative test, that's perfect. But if you get a negative person and a positive test, that's what you call a false positive. Now in this study, a false positive rate that's high is gonna artificially elevate the number of patients in that 3,300 that are positive for the disease, which means you're gonna overestimate how many people have been exposed and you're gonna underestimate the mortality rate, the infectious fatality rate.
of everyone who's been infected. Now, what's interesting about this piece is they actually looked at the test they were using. It's a blood test, and they actually studied it in about 30 positive patients and 80 negative patients, and they found that it was in that population 100% specific, meaning all the negatives showed up negative. And actually, it was a little less sensitive. So if there were 30 um, positive patients, only 28 of them tested positive. So it, it was actually not fully sensitive. So you're actually missing some positive patients. So it might even possibly be that you're under estimating the true prevalence of the disease. Now, the other downside of this particular study, and again, it hasn't had peer review yet, uh, is that they used Facebook ads to recruit patients for the study. So you'd see an ad that basically said, hey, do you want to be tested for COVID and the blood and see if you're immune or something like that. We don't know exactly what they said. Well, that's going to bias the study because people who are already concerned, maybe they've had an exposure, maybe they've had some symptoms, maybe they're worried about it, like their friends have it. Well, that's a population that might be enriched in people who are more likely to be infected that would skew the results. So it's another reason that you can't fully take any data at face value. You have to be very critical and look at it very, very carefully. But let's say that it's roughly correct. Well, that means that this particular illness may be less fatal than previously reported, more widespread, so already all over the place. And therefore, we have to think about when we're talking about social distancing, which is great, how do we start to weigh the damage of all this lockdown versus the benefit in terms of saving lives? You have to take your infectious fatality rate into consideration when you're talking about reopening. So we need good data to make good decisions when it comes to public health. And so far, we haven't really had it. Hopefully studies like this, there are more occurring with WHO and others that are gonna be measuring this, and it'll help us understand when we can safely reopen. And also, was our response the correct response given what we ultimately learn about this virus? Now, one thing I'll say is this, it's very clear that this thing favors healthcare workers, clear as day, because you're putting sick patients into a healthcare environment and exposing frontline healthcare workers who have very little protection, at least in areas where it's short. And so that population is specifically at risk and has every right to scream and yell about how they've been put in danger by this thing. And if anything, by putting them at risk, you amplify the infectious rate because they go home and make other people sick in theory. So we need to protect our frontline healthcare workers. We need more data like this. We need to validate and study these antibody tests to see if they actually work. And then we need immunological data to say, do those antibodies actually mean you're immune to the disease? In which case, you get a little card saying you're good to go, go back to work, and you know, you've know you been through it already. So that being said, I uh, just wanted to summarize all that for you guys. If you like the way we do things on this show, if you like the cut of our jib or whatever the kids are saying now, become a supporter on Facebook or YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell on YouTube so you get uh, notifications and share the crap out of this stuff because we're trying to fight insanity with reason. All right, guys, I love you. We out. Stay safe.